I'm going to talk about strong parameters, which is a feature in Rails 4 uh, that is kind of a replacement for the attribute accessible uh, feature in previous versions of Rails. Oh, you're not and showing on the screen. Very good. So, um, basically, I wanted to talk about the strong parameters, which was a subject that I found a little bit confusing until I kind of dug into it last week. So what I've done here is I've created two Rails applications, a Rails 3 application and a Rails 4 application. Just totally the defaults, Rails new, R3, Rails new, R4. And then I um, did a, a, a generate scaffold and created a wine model in both uh, cases just to see what we get and compare the way that the protection uh, against mass assignment is handled in Rails 3 versus Rails 4. So let's look at the Rails 3 code first. Um, if we look at the model class that's been generated, um, if we look at the wine model, We'll see that the wine model. Can you, can you make has the been, font bigger? Hmm? Make the font bigger. Yeah. That the wine model has uh, been provisioned with this by the scaffold generator, with this line attribute accessible, and then here are the the five fields. And what that does is it permits those fields to be mass assigned. So typically that happens in your controller class. Let's look at the controller that was generated. Here's our wine controller. So for example, in the create method, we actually create a new wine record just by saying wine new and then passing in the params that came in from the form. But of course, people could spoof the URL, add some extra params to the query string, and possibly, maybe not in this case, but possibly um, set some data in our database uh, that is other than what we intended uh, to be set uh, when we were creating a new wine. Similarly, the update method, um, we do wine equal, uh, new wine equals uh, wine.find params ID, and then we call update attributes on wine, and we pass in whatever, whatever was in the hash that came from the, the form. And that was considered rather dangerous, and that's the reason that the attribute accessible feature was created. Now, in order to activate the attribute accessible feature in Rails 3, we actually need to go into the application.rb file where we set the configuration parameters for the application. And you will see here that also generated by the scaffolding and the Rails new is a line here that says uh, config.activerecord.whitelistattributes equals true. And as is explained here, this will create an empty whitelist of attributes available for mass assignment for all models. Um, as such, your models will need to explicitly whitelist or blacklist accessible prior parameters by using attribute accessible or the attribute protected declaration. Right? So that's the way it works in Rails 3. And let's just for fun, have a look at the uh, what if we start the app we do uh, Rails server here. Uh, this is just running with web webrick, and then we'll go to the browser and local host 3000 wines, and we have a wine here. Let's say we want to edit the wine. We want to change the, the maker to, um, uh, I don't know, uh, De Gaulle. All right, and 
and now we'll update the wine. And of course, that's going, the wine was successfully updated because, as we know, uh, the, uh, the maker, uh, the maker field in the model class had the attribute accessible set. So now let's go back over to our, um, uh, to our model and change this. We'll just, uh, we'll just comment out this line. Okay, and then we'll uh, stop the server. And then we'll uh, start the server again. And now when we go over here to, uh, to wines, if we want to create a, uh, well, we'll forget, we can just edit the same wine again. Uh, let's uh, let's call this um, uh, Cote d'Huron and update the wine and mass assignment security error. Okay, so in so this seems like a good feature. What's wrong with this? Well, here's what's wrong. With it. Uh, it, what they what they decided to do was that they thought, well, we, 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 we might like to be able to override this. So what they did is they allowed you to override this in two possible ways. Uh, one of them, we'll leave it commented out there, but we'll go to the controller class. And what we can do is, in this update method, we can pass an extra parameter here, which is without protection. Okay? And then if I save this and now stop the server and restart the server. Now we'll go back here to our browser and we'll look for our wines and we'll edit this wine and we'll change this back to the current president of France, Monsieur Hollande, and we'll update wine and what happened here? Uh oh. Can't convert symbol into integer. This wasn't supposed to happen. Isn't it like without protection equals true or something? You just, what, yeah, what just, wrote wrong? The, just wrote the symbol without protection. Oh, yes. Yes. I think yeah. right. So it's, oh, it should uh, be. There's a bracket after wine. Oh, never mind. Yeah, without protection, true. You think that's no. correct? No. Okay. in your controller. But there's an even more insidious way to override this in your controller, which is that you can pass an as parameter here and then provide some symbol. Right? Now, the intention on this was that the controller probably knew who the current user was. And we somehow uh, would, based on logic, which obviously I didn't generate with the scaffold here, would I would have a current user available, would be able in the controller logic to determine whether this user was a winemaker or an administrator or a drinker or whatever, and based on who it was who was updating this. Uh, would would be they, they would or would not be able to uh, change certain parameters. So 
So let's say in this case that we're going to uh, change this for everybody to a maker. And at the same time, we go into the model class, we put the attribute accessible line here. Um, but we're, we're only going to allow We're only going to allow administrators to change everything, but if you're a maker, the only thing that you can change is, uh, say, the, the name, the year of the one. Okay. So now we'll save this. And now recall that our controller is treating everyone like a maker. We'll go back here, and then we'll restart. Go back to our uh, browser. And we'll edit this one again, and we'll try changing the country to Ukraine. Error, right? However, if we go back here, we leave this at France, and we change the year to 1995, I think we still have a problem here. I think I need to update this page. set all the parameters. Yeah. Am I still trying to set them all? You still have form fields for them, so you're going to need to submit it to the controller, and they're getting passed on to update attributes. And oh, yes, yes, you're right. Yes. It's not smart enough to see you didn't change it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, let's, let's, take, let, let's assume that we've just made the change which David correctly identified. And assume that now that it works, that we were allowed to. So what we would do here is instead of updating all of the params, we would only update uh, the um, the year, right? Is that going to work now, in your opinion? You have to write year colon before that before that params. But then it will work. Sorry, I need to do extra permit fixes. What do I need to do? You need to make a hash of the things you want to set. Yeah, you just have an integer. Oh, you right. just have the year number right now. You need a hash. But you could, you could do so, that. But what you well, right the real solution would be to go back to the form and like don't display. But isn't the params one we're going to return a hash and then the next bracket year pulls out? Value. Yes. So, so the result of that expression would be a value, but you need it to be a hash. So you need to say year colon params colon y colon mm -hmm. year. Okay. Really? You no, no. Leave that. Yeah. Okay. Now what? No, no, no. Leave. Put it back. <laughs> Isn't there some other way like fetch multiple keys from a hash or something? Here. Oh yeah. There's. I think there's a like a, a slice or something. Let's do it this way though, because it'll be informative. Yeah, there's yeah. subtlety that's yeah. coming up. Do you want to come up and do it? Right square bracket. <laughs> right, okay. And then put your colon before the params. Excuse me? Bef go back to before params and put your colon there. And you need one more thing. Yeah. Okay. Which is curly braces around that first hash. Yeah. So you're trying to pass two hashes into update attributes. Like this? Yeah. Oh. So now you reassemble the hash. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yes. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. It'd be nice if there were an easy way to slice that out. Mm -hmm. 
There probably is. <laughs> Some language. Okay, so let's uh, do this again and see if it works. So now the point is though that how are we doing for time? Oh, for two minutes left, right? Yeah. Okay. So the point is that this is probably a terrible idea. <laughs> because what we have now done is we have provided a way of effectively implementing business logic inside the model class. All right? So, not a great idea. So instead, of, in my opinion, instead of simply recognizing that mass assignment, while it was a mass assignment protection, while it was a useful feature in a model class, was basically uh, should have been left as it is and not extended with this feature. Uh, the I think the Rails core team was of a rather different view. So they said, well, actually, what we ought to do is put all of this logic into the controller. So, um, and do it in a standard way in the controller and allow mass assignment without restriction in the model. So that's what we get in Rails 4. So let's look at the, at the code that's generated by the scaffolding in Rails 4. First of all, We'll have a look at the model class. As you can see, no attribute accessible line. The application.rb file has practically empty, no uh, uh, whitelist attributes uh, setting. And then when we go to the controller class, for the Wines controller, what we will see is that we're creating a wine with passing in wines param, wine params, updating, passing in wine params. Now, what is wine params? Well, we just keep scrolling down here a little bit, and we'll find it. <laughs> here we are. It's Define def, define wine params. Never trust parameters from the scary internet. Only allow the whitelist through. And here is where, with this new params object, um, there is obviously a require method that can be called on it, and then a permit method that can be called on it. So the params has to have a wine hash within it, and then within the wine hash, there it, we're going to permit name, maker, region, country, and year. So um, this works. Um, if we go here now to, uh, let's close this one. We'll probably stop working with that one. And now we'll go to the R4 example, and we'll start Rails server. And then we'll go back here. Oh, that's uh, so just to show that we're really running Rails 4 here. We're running this with Ruby 2.1.2 and Rails 4.1.5. And lines. And um, as you can see, it's a completely different line. Uh, and we can edit this, and we can change this to, um, you know, uh, there's another wine region. Temecula? Hmm? Temecula? Yeah. Something that's easy to spell. France. <laughs> it's not, okay. Napa? <laughs> Napa's pretty easy to spell. Yeah, yeah, I already had Napa. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Where's another one up there? Oh, Sonoma. 
There we are. Okay. So we update Y. Yay, it worked. Okay. So now we go, we go back here into our uh, controller class and I guarantee you that if we take permit, take one of those fields out of permit, we're going to have the same problem that we did before. Okay? So I think you've seen that enough times that you're probably willing to believe that, right? So how is this actually how is this actually implemented? So the idea the idea around this is that you would write whatever logic you wanted to put in, whether it was about which user was allowed to do this or you know, what day of the week it was, or whatever, but whatever logic you wanted to put around what actions should be permitted, when and by whom, and under what circumstances would all be in the controller and would be included in your definition of wine params. Um, now, I don't know, I have reservations about this. First of all, uh, a lot of us don't really are, are really thinking that we want to be taking as much um, logic as possible out of the controllers and putting it elsewhere, like say into the service classes. Um, in addition, it leaves the model class itself completely unprotected from mass assignment. So I have those two reservations. So I'd be interested to know what other opinions there are. Jason, I thought you might have something to say. So to your, your first point about the taking the wanting to take logic out of the controller, that's true except for logic that has to do deal directly with HTTP and form posts and stuff like this. I mean, this, this is specifically dealing with something coming from the web, and that's what the controller's responsibility is. So I definitely think the controller is a better place to... I, Absolutely, think the controller is a better place to do this than in the model. Um, well, how, what about when you want to share uh, to, when, when the same logic needs to be shared between, say, different controllers? I've created a uh, param sanitizer class before that does that stuff. You pass in the params and do all your share yeah. share. Yeah, share it the same way you would share any other logic in an object-oriented program. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can well, use a module. You should tell us how that actually works, though, right? Yeah, I'd yeah. Like something yeah. you have for later. Yeah, what if you remove yeah. maker? Will it give you an error message, or will it just not update the maker, or what? Yeah, so what happens here, I think what, what you can, we can do investigate this in two ways. Um, one, one here is that let's actually see uh, how this works. Um, on the command line. So let's just start up the uh, Rails console here. Okay, and uh, action control of parameters. So if I do a, uh, let's do wind up first just to see the various fields. Now, if I do a wine.new and I just pass in my own hash, um, okay, uh, and year uh, 2003, okay. Uh, no, no problem. But if I make a params, which is equal to action controller dot parameters, it's probably core core. Actually, calling uh, parameters dot new and will pass in exactly the same thing. Let's put 2004 just a difference. 
Okay. And now if we do y dot new grams, we're going to get forbidden attributes error. And <clears throat> the reason why it does that is because the because uh, in the process of uh, there, there's a, a, a method that's called deep within uh, active record called assign attributes. So let's have a look at that. Um, so let's do bundle open um, active record. Okay, there's active record, and we will uh, do find find in files, assign attributes, def assign attributes, and what you'll see in here is at some point it takes the, the new attributes that have been passed in, uh, and after stringifying the keys, it passes these to a method called sanitize for mass assignment. Okay? Now it turns out that sanitize for mass assignment is actually an active model rather than active record. So let's look at that. Okay, so again, we'll do the find, find in files, sanitize, we're probably going to get the whole thing there. And so uh, def sanitize. And what you can see here is that if the attributes class that's been passed in to this method, sanitize for mass assignments, responds to the permitted method, permitted question mark, then the, the attributes themselves have to be permitted. But if it doesn't respond to permitted, then it just takes the attributes and passes them along to the active record model class. Okay? So what that also means is that, Jeremy, if you've written something that works this way, and your, what did you call your method? Your, your class? Param sanitizer? It's param sanitizer. If your param sanitizer responds to permitted and um, and then uh, gives and, and basically true or false and, 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 and says true, then it will, this will also allow your custom um, sanitizer uh, to work with this and you wouldn't necessarily need to use the um, action controller parameters that's provided by uh, Rails. Mm -hmm. By the way, that line of that code looks really bad to me because there's no way to get a useful error message to the user. It just raises this one exception. Um, so that makes me sad. Yeah. If they should have just called attributes.assert permitted or something. Yeah, so um, so that's that's the way it works. Do you know why it doesn't raise the error at the time of the time that list of allowed parameters is presented to params? But yeah, at the time that you called dot permit. No. no. It would seem like that would make sense. So they have to involve active model and active record. And yeah, so the error the error will actually occur at the point when the when the parameters are passed through to active model. Anybody else have some insight on that? So I don't I don't know enough about how it works, but the actual hash you get in from the request is that an instance of that parameter? What it will do actually is let, let, let's enough. let's look at the Rails console again. Like what what is the and permit method that? Yeah, let me, let me do this again. Or, I'm sorry. What is the um, what's the thing you called before? Now if we do. Uh, params dot 
committed is false, okay? But if we do params.permit year, now you see what it's done is it stripped the not permitted items out of the hash. Uh. And now if I if I say params dot permitted, it returns I'm supposed to return true now. You called dot permitted after the uh, Yeah, you you called it on the original params again. Oh right, yes. P equals params dot So that's, that's what it does. So it, it, it basically filters out the ones that are permitted and then, and then has uh, permitted question mark return true. And then that's accepted by sanitized for mass assignment method. One reason why they might have done it this way is that it actually is kind of backward compatible with the whitelist attributes thing because the whitelist attributes also cause it also has this call to sanitize for mass assignment. So they managed to write it in such a way as it plugged into exactly the same spot in active record with almost exactly the same code. Cool. We should wrap it up. Okay, that's it. All right. Thanks, Alan.